very good morning to you. How you're doing? And welcome to Life in Style. It's Monday. And super excited to be your host, Mikali, this particular day. Every single start of the week, we start on a new high. We've got Motivate, books and blogs, Beyond the Sport and the Kitchen. And we call it Inspiration Monday. Now, this tell us off is Motivate. We are at the hub in Karen. And we're here to meet a gentleman who's been in this country for close to 10 years. And, uh, well, he's Australian. But he's many things put together. He's a mentor, he's an educator, he's a philanthropist, he's an entrepreneur, he's a father, and guess what? He can actually sing. Hopefully, we'll get him to sing by the time this show is over. But we're here to talk about fear, making you accomplish those dreams. What is holding you back? Because he says his passion is to make you grow. Let's have a talk with Michael Flynn. Michael! <laughs> Don't pretend you are not listening. <laughs> I'm sure you were listening. Is she yeah, introducing me right? That's true. I wanted to, I really wanted to look at you actually. Yeah, you should have looked. <laughs> uh, Kidogo too. How are you? I'm very well. Good How to are see you. And you look good. really good. Thanks very much. Yeah? Takes one to no one. Ooh. Well, Charlie, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and here we are at the very spectacular hub. Yes, it's beautiful. Really great. It's this. beautiful. Look at this location. Did you see some fish in there? <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, you know, this is very interesting. This is Motivate. And we take time to go to people's homes, not their offices, not when they're bossy and everything. But I know you come from Mombasa, That's so true. you're in a room probably for business or something. But why did you choose the hub, though? Great question. <laughs> uh, Antonio Sol, in ah. fact, put me in touch with Derek at the hub here. Okay. What an excellent location. Firstly, because it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I met a, a really sparkling young ambitious Kenyan this morning, Derek, who, uh, uh, who was telling me... I know me, Derek. You know Derek, right. <laughs> I know okay. Derek. So, so, so the hub is the vision of the owner of Dalbit Petroleum. Mm. And I walked around this morning and I thought, this is really visionary. This is really something powerful. It's beautiful. It it's is. amazing. It it's is. the future of Kenya right here. Absolutely. It's great. So I'm glad we're here. <laughs> you know, talking about Kenya, um, mm. you're Australian. Mm. Yeah, I lived yeah. here for close to 10 years or more. 10 years, yeah. yeah. Over. Yeah. Over 10 years. Yeah. Over 10 years. Mm. What brought you to Kenya? Because you're doing such an amazing job with the people of Kenya. Well, thanks very much for saying that. The, yeah. the, 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 this is about the people of Kenya, by True. the way, and not about me. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so but thanks for the appreciation. <laughs> My first impetus for coming here was I was uh, having a little bit of a struggle in Sydney at the time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and clear as a bell, this is a true story. Okay. And in my head, I heard a voice saying, you think you're having a tough time? Why don't you go and be helpful where people are having a tough time? Mm. I swear. And I heard this idea, go to Africa. Mm -hmm. and so, the, so I enrolled straight away to volunteer in an orphanage, okay. which ended up being near Subakia. Mm -hmm. uh, Subakia is in, in Nakuru. In, in, it, it is yeah, in Nakuru, that's right, Nakuru. you know that. Yeah. And it was this run down, and you know, the kids had no mum, no dad, and I served there for about six weeks mm -hmm. and started to teach in a primary school nearby. Uh -huh. So I got to know Kenya from the school up, right. and it was a life-changing experience. You know, Africa is a huge, uh, yeah. Michael, but then yeah. again, Kenya. The, the must have been, it, it must have been a calling and we're, we're happy for that because, I mean, really, but you left your job. Yes, I did. This was a leap of faith. It was a risk. Yes. It was, what, did you feel a bit of fear? Absolutely. I know you're very huge on what fear is all yeah. about. And <laughs> yeah, <people> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> shouldn't, you know, give in to it. No, but that's But what was right. going through your head during that? I'm leaving your life, your family to come to a place. You yeah. knew only one person, yeah. I think. Yeah, M Mukali, what a powerful question. Uh, yeah. Feel the fear and do it. Yeah. Absolutely go where the fear is because that's where the excitement is. Mm. That's what's going to get you on the edge to go, you know, I really need to get up and go. All and right. that's right, we do need to get up and go. Uh, I left my businesses. Mm -hmm. I le left to come and volunteer for just six weeks. Okay. And my friends were saying, you know, you'd be really great to start something over there and, and help people. And, that, 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 and they were kind of signaling to me. And they knew before I did that this was going to be my calling. Yeah. And I followed my heart, Mukali, and I came here saw the plight of children in schools and then started to ask myself, what can I do? What can I do to serve these kids? How could we make this better? What a blessed journey it's been since then. Wow, 
Wow, great. And yeah. you've worked with children, Mombasa, Nairobi, the slum in Gara, you know, the little sports organization and all of that put together. And we are big, if you've been Kenya for those years, then you know we're big on education. Where are your grades? Where's yes. the A? Yeah, that's Where is it. the B? That's it. The yes. university. But then you chose a different direction yeah, sure. and decided, you know what, let's play a little bit. Macquarie, Why look that? at what we've met, learned about each other in these minutes we've met. You're so sharp on body language and you've heard me say yes, that. Yes, I've heard you say Guys, that. Guys, this is a really <laughs> sharp woman, okay? Thank you for the, that. Yeah, that's true. I hope my boss is watching. The, uh, uh, hi. <laughs> uh -huh. The fact of the matter is, and, and nobody's suggesting that education isn't important, true, Macquarie, true. but I didn't learn business skills. I didn't learn how to connect with you yeah. in a maths class. No, you didn't. I didn't learn it in a chemistry class yep. either. Uh, and the, the truth of the matter is that the really important stuff, like how to connect with people, how to believe in yourself, mm -hmm. how to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. how to be a, a, a host of a TV show. show. Yeah. These things you learned since you had your education. So I would suggest to everybody, even uni students, University doesn't give you an education, it teaches you how to learn. Ah. As soon as you make a decision to start learning and yeah. reading, yeah. wow, you educate yourself a, a life, you, you become an entrepreneur. What really holds back, how do you take those steps, baby steps to actualizing or taking that leap of faith? That is such a great question. And first of all, the resonance that I feel, every single one of us has fear. Yeah. Obama has fear. Yeah. Nelson Mandela had fear. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali had fear. Yeah. And those are some of my great icons. I mean, Martin Luther King was in fear of his life all the way. Yeah. And yet, there was something bigger that drove great people, like Michelle Obama, True. like Oprah Winfrey, another yeah. one of my heroes. Mm -hmm. Fear is what drove them to say, you know what, I've got something I want to share with people. Yeah. I was with Cynthia Mumbo yesterday, mm -hmm. an amazing woman. Yeah. As soon as you find your purpose and really want to help somebody else, yeah. you'll overcome the fear because the passion to do it will take you past the fear. And the fear becomes fuel. Yeah. Strangely enough, it's what drives people. Yeah. Uh, fear's good. <laughs> it's so good. is failure. Failure's a really good teacher. <laughs> you talk about purpose and passion mm. so easily. Yeah. Probably because you've come to a point where you understand what your purpose is. I do. And what I your do. passion is. That's right. But there are people who are struggling to know what is my purpose in this life. Yes. And they say that if you do not um, find your purpose, then you're not leaving. So you start leaving when you know why you're leaving. How do you come about knowing that you know, I, I was born for this. I was put here to accomplish this. Yeah, great question. You start. Okay. And what I've learned, uh, etching in the lines over the years, is don't live life in your head. Okay. Get out and do it. Wow. Just go to the gym. Just go to the theater. Go hear Mufasa Poet because you didn't go before. Simply go. Why not ring this station and see if they can tag along and help you guys out one day? You want to get into media? Why not pick up the phone and try? And why not turn up and say, I don't want to be paid, let me help you. Find your passion by doing yeah. and unleash into it. And as soon as you find that thing that you want to do, yeah. just do it. Want to be a millionaire? Help a million people. Want to be a billionaire? Help a billion people. Go for it. So what you're saying is that it will not happen if you're not doing anything. Absolutely. We make a choice in every single moment. Am I going to watch TV? Mm -hmm. Am I going to get comfortable? Success is not comfortable. Success is about getting uncomfortable. Comfort will rob you of your dream. Everybody I know, Bonfus Mwangi, mm. Mufasa Poet, Anto, Cynthia Mumbo, Chef Ali, yeah. these guys, I've, I've hang out with these guys, these guys are very driven, not what you call comfortable, mm -mm. because they're trying to change the world. They want to make change, they want to make positive change in Kenya, the way I do. We're a powerful young nation. When I, I, I firmly believe that the way towards happiness is being of service to other people. Yeah. I really believe that. 
I think that's a very important message for all of us in Kenya. This is a we deal. Mm -hmm. When I was in a school in Nakuru, I saw that things were tough on the kids, uh, there was a lot of beating of the kids, and I was asked to take a sports class. Okay. And it, 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 Mukali, it was a catastrophe. <laughs> there, there were two soccer balls, there were more than 80 girls trying to play netball, and, and like 140 kids having trying to play football. You know. okay. And it just played in my mind, how could I help? How could I help? Mm -hmm. And that was the essence of little sports being born. <clears throat> nice. when, when I worked in the slums in Angara, yeah. Trust me, I stopped thinking about me. Whoa. I know a girl who grew up in that little slum in Angara, mm -hmm. who got 427 in, in her... In her ex yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I saw that little girl, it just moves me. I saw that little girl studying in the, in the alleyway of the slum on, on a cardboard box. Whoa. You can do what you want to do if you yeah. want it bad enough. True. So Little Sports started, and I love what you just said about start with one. Yeah. Little Sports started with a sack of sports equipment and people staring at this funny looking Mzungu yeah. carrying a sack of sports equipment in a matatu on Saturday mornings to Kavera. Yeah. And you just try and you try again and 30 kids came the first week and 50 the second and after a month I don't know if this is going to work. And people saying, ah, you're wasting your time and this is not new. And then suddenly one school and then two, and then three, until right now, thanks to Base Titanium out there in Kuala, yeah. the current project is 12,000 children per week. Whoa. Yes, 50 jobs for Kenyans, thanks to our donor. Oh, that's really and, nice. and isn't that wonderful? It isn't is that, beautiful. Yeah, doing sport and life skills. Yeah. And the children are so joyous. <laughs> it's so lovely. It is lovely, and yeah. you're also very uh, passionate about the youth. Yes. You have a yes. conference um, that, uh, uh, an entrepreneurship summit yeah. of some sort where the youngings are coming and it's different from um, what uh, we normally see or normally happens where you just go and then you're left hanging so maybe you can tell us about a bit more about this um, youth entrepreneurship uh, conference well Carly I want to share something with you yeah when I was uh, a youth yeah I was uh, I came from a very tough rough background okay it was not good. I saw a lot of violence. Mm -hmm. uh, I managed to get to university simply because for a small window in, in, in Australia at the time, it was free. Okay. Otherwise, my parents couldn't have afforded that. And my self-esteem was so low because of abuse in childhood. I was the biggest drug dealer in Sydney. I was really big. And what I mean by that, it was just pathetic. <laughs> I, I've been where guns meet, you, you, oh yeah, I've been Whoa. in, I've, yeah, you, you can see it in my eyes, I've, I've been there, yeah, you got it. <laughs> no, you didn't. I, I really did. <laughs> so our message to youth, yeah. all of us who are involved in this in entrepreneur, no matter how down you are, yeah. no matter how tough your circumstances are, you're going to come and be mentored by people who've been there, who yeah. understand what you're going through, yeah. have been in the gutter, have gone all the wrong ways. Mukali, how I didn't end up either dead or in prison was the work of God and only, because I did everything you're supposed to do to get there. Whoa. True story. And somebody at 25 years of age threw me a motivational tape, set of tapes and said, here, start listening to this. So right now there's a lifetime of personal growth and the how to actually do this. Is that why you've brought people together like Boniface, Mufasa? Yes. Is it because of their background? Yes, and if you look at each one, Anto, Boniface, Cynthia. Cynthia is now a CEO and recently came back from the United States, yeah. invited on an entrepreneurship, so you probably know how great she is. And she started her big job in the UN and they gave her a slasher and said, go slash the grass. Whoa. And she was expelled from school in Canberra. Bonfus has a similar story. Anto, I was with Anto yesterday talking about, I said, the question I really want to ask you, bro, you're just a kid running around in a normal Wananchi school and you think you can a pop star. You think you can be a pop star. How are you going to do that? <laughs> he said, exactly. That's what it's about. Yeah. Mufas is the same. True. His, most, his mum rings him and says, well, so when are you going to get a job? And this is an incredibly gifted artist who can teach us so much mm -hmm. about how to actually do this. We yeah. teach you the how. Wow, that's interesting. I would love that. And then what happens? What happens after that? 
So I know my how, how to do this. Yes, but, you do. You know, there's so many other things like funds. There's so many other things like mentorship. Are you going to hold my hand along the way? That is absolutely what we plan to do. So in January, we're launching a 12-week course. Mm -hmm. So the overview of the course is the first three weeks is about the mental attitude of how to overcome that fear yeah. and reaching into people's, the youth's hearts and saying, we know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. This is what you're currently thinking. Yeah. You've got your dream here and you've got your head going, I can't do this, I'm not good enough and all that stuff that's going on for all of us. So we're going to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to week by week show you how to do this. And yes, we're going to hold your hand. We're going okay. to show you how to stand in a meeting when you meet the big guy yeah. or girl, woman. Yeah. We're going to tell you what to say. We're going to let you role play that. We're going to put you in touch with big people who are going to critique you on the way. We're offering a million bob worth of startup funds. Whoa, that's really nice. To the guys who really step up and get serious. Okay. We're going to put them in touch with funders, both local here. Big Kenyans are getting involved. Big brands will be involved. I'm okay. sure they will want to be. Yeah, definitely. And, 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 and we're going to take people right through the process of how and actually assist the, them with their funding. But you know what? They've got to earn it. Yeah, absolutely. Just like absolutely. you have. Absolutely. So. Um, Mentorship is something that you're really passionate about. Yeah. Who mentored you? Do you have someone who you look up to in terms of, you know, if it wasn't for this person, I probably wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't have probably overcome my fears. That's a, a, a absolute beauty. Uh, and, and mentorship along the way in, in life is so important. Mm -hmm. And never be mentored by a person who doesn't have a mentor. Yeah. I ha yeah, yeah. I currently have a Sydney based uh, w woman, Tina Monk, who mentors oh. me. We do a Skype session every Tuesday morning. Whoa. Tina, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tina's around 10 years older than me. Mm. When Crowley, wow, is this woman sharp, like just, you know, boom. And I go, <laughs> oh, the fear's there or whatever's yeah. going on. You know, I get it. I'm not walking my talk yet. Yeah. Wow. Most people and would think that, you know, I, I, I'm just good by myself. If I listen to Michael Flynn talk once, I'm good to go. But what would you say is the importance of those weekly conversations with your mentor? If, first of all, know this. Success is not a destination. It's a journey of, about what we think and do the minute we wake up each morning. Great. It's, a, it's how we live our lives. Mm -hmm. We don't arrive. I've still got bigger dreams. It's a daily practice of what's next, what next. I'm, I listen to motivational stuff every single day of my life. I exercise every single day. I I'm told a, you you look oh, fit. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> well, <it was. laughs> I told you. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. you gotta, yeah, earn it. It's how we live. Mm -hmm. Other mentors, Muhammad Ali yeah. for me, uh, Jimi Hendrix. Uh, mm -hmm. I love hanging around with Bonfus Mwangi. That's one incredible. Anto Neosol. I mean, yeah. wow. Mufasa, wow. What a brain. Uh, Cynthia Mumbo, yeah. um, Nelson Mandela. Spent 26 years in a prison and said I was all free. Absolutely. I mean, wow. Yeah. Uh, Oprah Winfrey. What does yeah. it do to you, though? You know, like, um, you know, the steps. Maybe we can take a walk and look at this sure. beautiful gardens. Yeah. But what does it do to you when you have someone holding your hand and the importance of that? What is the importance of a mentor mm. for everyone out there who thinks they're just, they're just fine? The most important thing is to be teachable yourself. Yeah. The, 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 anybody who wants to be a mentor and be big and be an entrepreneur uh -huh. needs to learn from others. Let's take an example of Richard Branson. Uh -huh. Look at what he did when he started the space business. He doesn't know anything about the space business. Yeah. His real talent as an entrepreneur is to be teachable. Ah. So the first thing he does is make phone calls to people who do know about the space business and said, could you tell me how to do this? That's a smart person at work. Being teachable is what makes us successful. Success is a we deal. As you go through life, you gain experience with so many different businesses, which is why people can be on boards in an industry that they have never actually been in, mm -hmm. because the rules of business are actually very simple. Yeah. There are only two things you need to be an entrepreneur, for example. Okay. Passion uh -huh. and analysis. And if you can do those two things, you can do it. Oh, if you learn how to do it. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. passion and analysis. That's it. You only okay. need two things. So, wow. yeah. We're going to be getting more of this. I mean, what you're doing with the youth and the entrepreneurship uh, conference, this is the message Absolutely. that you'll be hearing more of this. 
and the how. Mm -hmm. The actually important thing, and we're all very driven guys, the team is very driven. Yeah. This is not about us. Yeah. This is about you. Yeah. This is about you being able to do this stuff. We're very practical. From us, you get the how. Great. From guys who came from the tough places, who've done it. Done it. And how do I get to be part of this conference? You register online okay. with us and then we put you in a big uh, draw mm -hmm. and depending on how many people register Whoa. and then we find some beautiful entrepreneurial brand that wants to give us a space to do this in and you start turning up 12 Saturdays in a row and the transformation will happen if you want it bad enough. That's really nice. So what are we looking for online? What is that uh, online web page? You, that... you go to my Facebook page, okay. uh, Michael Flynn Mentor, mm -hmm. and, and the details will be posted there. And, and Absolutely. So you're visit. looking at the universities? Or... Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, we, as you know, we ju just completed a Kenyatta and, and, uh, and, and All Saints. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going into five Mombasa universities very soon with oh. this. And we're go looking at all the other universities. We want to reach the youth. We want to reach the dynamic people in the youth who really want to do something with their lives. That means the age is covered at 35. Well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can pull it. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if uh, 35 and below, do, do you have an age limit or it's open for anyone who thinks they have this entrepreneurial thing burning in them, but they don't know how to do it and they would like to reach out to learn the how? We're putting an age bracket of 18 to 35, okay. it, 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 but you know what? Never give up. Right. If you're a 40 year old and you've got it going on and you want to be included, you're either going to find a way or you'll find an excuse. <laughs> Betty, find a way. You're All welcome. Right. You're welcome. Very, very interesting. And if you are there and you think you've got in it, we've got it in you to be an entrepreneur and you don't know how to go about that if you want to accomplish this dream then you know what look for michael flynn the mentor on facebook get the details in there and it might just be you so it does i don't have to be in this university do i have to no no not at all okay you, that's just where you'll be based you can be anywhere you like including sitting in the slum wanting to wanting to do something with your life if you have a purpose and you want to get up and go and you're prepared to go through what it takes you're welcome with us. You're, you're in a room with the guys who get it. <laughs> All right. You're already doing big things with the society right here from Nairobi to Mombasa. And people can feel your presence in terms of how you would like to change or help them yeah. change their livelihoods, which is very, very important. But looking at, uh, you talked about having big dreams. Looking at five years from now, Michael Flynn, what will you be doing? What is that other thing that you're heading towards? Because you've taken care of us in terms of playing games and helping us in that way, then you've gone to the youth, from the children to the youth, what next? I have an incredibly powerful burning light inside me yeah. that flies me out of bed in the morning. Every single morning I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I want to change the way we think. Wow. I want us to build our self-esteem as Kenyans and to know that we are the toughest, smartest people in the world. Absolutely. And I really, this is a big dream, I'm almost scared to tell you. <laughs> I'd really like to change the way we engage with the West. Okay. And I would really like the West to change the way it views us. The old, poor, struggling African person who needs a donation, yeah. you know, and a pat on the head and some patronizing needs to die. Right. Do you have any philosophy, mantra, um, a motto uh, you live by? You think about it, meditate about it, that keeps you focused on what you do every day? Yeah, I have a few of them actually. Mm -hmm. The first one is, we is bigger than me. Mm -hmm. A life of service is better than a life of self-centeredness. Wow. We is bigger than me. And the other one I stole from an incredible motivational speaker called Dennis Waitley. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. It's an inside job. As soon as we decide to be successful mm -hmm. and are prepared to walk through the fire and the ups and downs and the tears and all that it takes to get there, <laughs> we can. We really can. I hear you're one of those people who make people walk on fire. Why? Is that, is that, are you going to do true? that with me? Uh, ah, well, I think I'm going to take you come up on, on that. Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely going to do that. Why not? Yes. So I'm not, I'm not going to get burned. Oh, is it the perseverance? So I'm getting burned, yes, but then I can. I can walk through this. It's actually through your mind. That's exactly. And w why it's such a beautiful thing to do and great to, to fire you up, sorry, mm -hmm. pardon the pun, <laughs> is that you think you can't. 
and you think you're going to get burned. Yeah. Just like the entrepreneur yeah. thinks I'm going to lose my money and I'm going to do this and my mum's not going to approve and my dad wanted me, me to be an accountant and now I've just, and the truth is, yes you can. Wow. Come, come and do it with me. Yes you can. <laughs> yes you I really can. can. Yes, I can. And you feel so oh, <laughs> proud of yourself and so, I can do anything. Yeah, can as I get a pedicure get... after yeah. that? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming here to the show, Michael. Such a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> so, so, I have learned, learned so much, much from you, and I hope everyone out there has gotten something from this conversation. Some of the things that I have learned is that if you want to do that huge thing, all you have to do is start step by step one little step like we say haba na haba hujaza kibaba just do it do you know that Musamo? just do it do, yeah. do you know it, you know it? <laughs> Karibu sana. <laughs> just do it that's all you need to do this has been motivate with me with kali and we're to give a short commercial break but remember to tell us what mantra or philosophy do you live by the hashtag is ktn life and style you can find us on facebook ktn life and style on twitter and instagram at ktn life underscore style sms 22840 We'll be right back. High five, Michael. Michael. <laughs> and you right. look really good. <laughs> that was really good. The unity of the family. This country ought to be reciprocal.